Hi everyone. I uh, hope everyone uh, managed to um, come back to the session number four. Um, so now we have with, with, with us um, Kier Grieben from uh, all the way from Scotland, actually, uh, Senior Information Analyst for Public Health Scotland. Um, and uh, now we're going to learn a bit more about a uh, um, package which was developed uh, in Public Health Scotland. Um, so over to you, Kier. Okay, thank you very much. I'll just start this slideshow, hopefully. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So, yep, I'm Kira Grebin. I am a senior information analyst at Public Health Scotland. Been here for, I think, like four and a half years, which is kind of scary. Doesn't feel like that long. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about um, PHS methods, which is our internal R package at Public Health Scotland. So, just to say now, I'm not going to get too technical, not really going to go into like the um, the details of package development. Um, but if you want to know more about that, my email is going to be in the slides so you can get in touch with me and I can pass that on to someone in my team or we can set up a meeting um, and we will work something out. So, yeah. Sorry, just trying to move the slide. There we go. So actually, Public Health Scotland is quite new. We only formed on the 1st of April this year, which is like right in the middle of this global pandemic we're all in. So it's kind of a baptism by fire, but you know, we're managing. Um, it combined three previous NHS agencies. So there was NHS Health Scotland, the Information Services Division or just ISD, and Health Protection Scotland, HPS. Um, and I worked for the ISD side. So my team, is the Transform Transforming Publishing Programme, which after like two years, I still can't say. Um, and our aim is just to modernise the way that PHS produces and pre presents their statistics. So just trying to move away from the old SPSS into Excel, into PDF report, not very exciting. So um, over the last few years, ISD, now PHS, has embraced open source soft software, mainly R, a little bit of Python, but not so much. Um, and it just started really organically, to be honest. Um, new grads were coming in with R knowledge and um, realized there was a better way to do things and started doing it. Um, even though it started organically, I think we realized fairly quickly that it needed to be formalized. Um, we can just let things keep on growing by themselves. So TPP has been at the forefront of a lot of this adoption of R. We have created style guides for code, introduced version control using Git and GitHub, worked with analysts across a range of teams to convert their PDF reports into Shiny applications. We have a bit more recently been introducing reproducible analytical pipelines or RAP projects, um, produced some R packages. Um, and that is a recent development, the R packages. And it's because we realized we had to widen our aim um, it wasn't really enough to just try and take on R in the organization, but we really had to ensure it was going to be adopted in a consistent manner across PHS um, and that every team wasn't just doing its own thing because that was never going to work. So why did we create PHS methods? Um, basically because um, <laughs> across PHS and I'm sure across lots of other organizations, analysts have to perform wide range of really repetitive tasks to get their work done to produce their statistics produce their publications and um, we've got some examples here although this is definitely not an exhaustive list um, you have to assign dates to financial years in a particular format or um, reformat postcodes that have been improperly recorded um, change a date into a quarter in english for a report and what we find is that these tasks can't be done by existing R packages, or at least they can't be done in a really straightforward way. So what happens is that as an analyst comes across one of these tasks they need to do, um, they come up with their own way of doing it. And, you know, maybe they code up themselves, or maybe they ask a colleague if they have code they can use or adapt, or as in one of my previous teams, there is a folder, buries in a folder, um, called useful syntax, and there's some script files in there that you go digging through to try and find the code you need. Um, and it works okay, but it's a bit of a waste of time and effort. 
um, you know, digging through that code to find the bit you need or trying to rework some code that just doesn't quite do what you want it to do. And it's quite frustrating for analysts who've got coding skills because they know it could be a lot easier, but it's just trying to find that time to sort it out. And I think probably more importantly than any of that is teams don't really tend to cross check their methods for you know, these more simple routine tasks. So we don't actually have any way of knowing that all the methods are doing the same things. And you know, maybe they are, but no one's asking the question, so how do we know? And this is my sort of terrible illustration of that. So we've done why we needed PHS methods. Um, hopefully you can see why the way we you know, used to work or still do a little bit needed to change. So what is PHS methods? The very, very short answer is it's our internal R package for Public Health Scotland. Um, and it contains a set of functions designed to make you know, routine data manipulation or the kind of routine tasks I've just talked about that bit easier. Um, none of the functions in there currently deal with any statistical methodology and they don't deal with any what I've called controversial methodology, although controversial is a pretty strong word and maybe too strong. All I mean by that is that there are some tasks that teams will handle differently, but they have good reason for that. Um, so for example, when we take records and need to aggregate them to stay level, um, some teams will take the first diagnosis and the stay as a diagnosis for the whole stay, some will take the last, and they all have their own reasons for doing that, and none of them are wrong. But our thinking was that we didn't want to have the good work we had done on the package um, be overshadowed by any kind of debate over what was the right and wrong way to do things. So we just chose functions that, you know, there couldn't really be an argument about the output. Um, and this is the, the little hexy badge I've made up for PHS methods because we don't have our own one yet, but one day. Um, so these are the functions that are in there at the moment. Um, there's 11 of them right now. Uh, the initial ones that we created were um, file size, which just returns the names and sizes of files in a particular directory, um, which is useful for when we do our publication reports because there's a, a little table that accompanies that that lists all the accompanying files plus their sizes, um, which I'm sure you can imagine is pretty tedious to have to do manually. Uh, financial year, or fin year rather, which assigns a date to a financial year in this format, so for example, 2016 17, um, just because that's the way we, we tend to format things for publication. And most of our publications, I think, work on financial year rather than calendar year. Uh, we also had postcode, which reformats improperly recorded postcodes so that we can match on various lookups. Uh, and finally, the, the set of quarter functions at the end here, um, which just takes a day and assigns it to you know, one of these quarters, depending on what you need, because um, a lot of our publications are by quarter also. So, you know, all these tasks are reasonably simple, or at least, you know, the output is simple. I won't say the functions were simple to write, um, but just annoying to have to code up over and over, um, which is where PHS methods makes a difference. So I'll just show an example very quickly. Um, this is an example of creating age groups. Um, so the first chunk of code is how, at least how I would do it. I know there's other methods to create age groups available if you prefer a different one. Um, just putting ages into 10 year age bands. It's not that much of a hassle really to create age groups, but it's a bit tedious to have to do it over and over again, or like find the last time you did it and copy and paste that code. Um, and also that's what 10 lines of code to do something really, really simple. Whereas if you look at the second chunk of code down here, you know, that's um, two lines of code and hard to see in a little example like this, but if you can imagine a big long script, if all your kind of data wrangling, data manipulation is handled by functions like this, your script is just gonna be so much cleaner and more readable um, and a lot probably easier to understand for someone a bit less familiar with R than these lines and lines of code, which fine for people who understand R, but if you're new to it, just maybe a little bit intimidating. So the process of creating the initial functions, within TPP, we decided that we would create the initial functions um, so that we could try out the process and really just to get things kicked off. 
So we wrote one function, each of the quarter functions were all written together. And importantly, what we did next was we then peer reviewed each other's codes, um, looking for improvements, things that could just be done a little bit better. And we also tested each other's functions. Um, and by tested, I mean really tried to break, like just entered all kinds of nonsense to see what happened. And the idea was to try and catch anything really obvious before we made it available for wider use in the organisation. It worked to an extent, although I think pretty much the minute we made it available, people were suggesting improvements. And that isn't a bad thing, actually. It's great because it means people were engaged and they wanted to help. Um, but I think it just shows you're never going to catch everything. So following the release, or just before the release, really, Two of our team volunteered to maintain the package going forward, which involves um, reviewing any new functions that are suggested. It involves reviewing any pull requests and um, just really being in control of the direction the package takes going forward. Um, however, it was really important to us that this package not be seen as something that belonged solely to our team that we were in control of. Our intention was only ever to get it started and then for it to be owned by the analysts in the organisation. Um, because I think if they had felt like it just belonged to us, there might have been reluctance to contribute or to get involved. So what we did was we deliberately found another maintainer from out with our team um, just to share that ownership a little bit. Um, something else about the process was that it was a really good learning experience for us, me especially, because it had been a while since I had actually written any R functions. Um, it just wasn't the way I tended to work, although I'm changing that. Um, it just takes so much more thought than just writing the code that does the thing you want it to do. You have to think, well, what's going to happen if people try and feed this a character string when it needs a date? What's going to happen if everything in that variable is the correct format apart from one entry do you really want to stop the whole function just for one entry or do you want to just make it a warning there's just so much more to consider um and there's things you never think about like for the postcode function it worked absolutely fine until you tried to feed it a london postcode because they're in a slightly different format and i guess being all in glasgow we didn't know that so that was interesting for uh, jack and my team to try and work around but we did get there in terms of the features of PHS methods, it's not on CRAN. Um, I guess we just didn't think it'd be really interesting to anyone outside of PHS, but it, maybe in the future we'll reconsider it. Um, so even though it's not on CRAN, we still wanted to produce the package to a really high standard, um, partly as a learning exercise for ourselves so that we really understood what we were doing, but partly as well because we wanted people to want to use the package and to trust the package. Um, so it was important to us that it had everything you would expect from a real package, if you like. So we included the function documentation, which was a good exercise for us anyway, to make sure that we could explain the functions well. Um, we created tests for our functions using the test that package, which was entirely new to me. I'd never heard of it before, never mind used it. Um, and that just made sure our functions worked as expected. Um, there's a fairly generous use of we here because I wasn't involved in this part, but we used Travis for continuous integration and incorporated code coverage checks. Um, we also do releases of the package just as and when needed, I guess, just whenever there's been a significant enough change. Uh, I think we're on our third release at the moment, if I remember correctly. So for people who want to contribute to PHS methods, there are guidelines. Um, we definitely wanted to encourage contributions. We didn't want anyone to feel like they, they couldn't you know, contribute, but we also wanted to keep it manageable for the maintainers because this is essentially something they've volunteered to do. Um, you know, They have their own full-time jobs on top of this. So we just wanted to keep it under control a little bit. So if someone has an idea, the first thing they should do is submit it as a GitHub issue for the maintainers to consider. And the maintainers will get together and discuss whether they want to take that idea forward. And it's important that they do that because each maintainer has an equal say in how the package goes forward. So it's not for anyone to, to make that decision by themselves. 
Um, if they do agree that they want to take the idea forward, whoever has suggested it um, gets that permission and they then make their own branch, work away on their idea until they feel it's ready. And then they'll submit a pull request for a review. Um, and at that point, the maintainers can review the pull request and either they will just approve it and say that's great, or they can request changes if they feel that any are needed. Um, and the whole idea behind this process, as well as keeping it manageable, is it should stop anyone spending time and effort on an idea which can't be taken forward for whatever reason. Also, it should stop multiple people working away on the same thing in isolation. Um, if they're all, you know, letting the maintainers know about it first, potentially we can point people at each other and say, actually, you know, someone over there had the same idea. Why don't you go and work together on this? Um, also, it does let the maintainers enforce good code habits. So, for example, obeying our style guide, um, using tests, error handling, all that kind of thing. Um, and I should say, if the maintainers want changes and they feel that there's anything missing, we don't just abandon people out in the cold, they do support people through that process. So there's a lot of benefits to having our internal R package. Firstly, for analysts who already have R skills, you know, it's, it's rewarding for them. They can contribute a function to make their own life easier, but also make other people's life easier. And they can take on a coding problem that they enjoy. Um, and you know, even if they have R skills, it doesn't mean they're not going to learn something new from the process because you know, potentially they've never used version control before or they've never thought about error handling in a function. So there's still a chance that they're going to learn something new through the process, even if it's just, you know, this is how you write code in R style. <laughs> um, analysts who don't have such strong R skills, they can also challenge themselves and build up their skills. Um, either just by using the existing functions or if they have a good idea and they want to contribute to the package, we definitely don't expect everyone to have experience of package development or even a version control. We only ask that they know how to write an R function and the maintainers um, will support them through the rest of it. That's what they're there for because we don't want to put people off contributing just because they think, well, I, I don't know all of this. None of us know all of it. We, we need to support each other. Something else that's also quite important is that a lot of the functions are quite easy to work into an R markdown. So, for example, the quarter functions of financial year. Um, we hope that that will encourage people to use markdown more um, because they can work those kind of things in. It'll also just, it's again, it gets rid of that repetitiveness um, and it limits the kind of typos that can happen. I'm sure we've all done it. You have to work your way through a 60 page report typing, you know, quarter end in March 2020, say over and over really easy for your brain just to turn off for a second and you write the wrong year or the wrong month and this stops that. Final thing and you know for me I think the biggest benefit as more people use the package hopefully more people will adopt R because you will think oh god I have to do that thing in SPSS I really hate oh but actually there's an R function that will do it for me maybe I should just use R and um, it maybe makes R a little less intimidating because they don't have to know how to do the thing they want to do in R because the function is there to do it for them. It will also mean there's more consistent codes and standards through PHS because if they're using the package that's all in our style guide. If they work off that they will also take on our style guide um, which just will mean that it's, it's going to be easier for us to share codes between teams because they're all writing in the same style. Uh, final thing which I think is also really important it will also hopefully standardize the way we do all these repetitive tasks. So each team isn't off with their own method of doing the particular thing, um, which is just really important because it means we can know we're all going to be doing the same thing. There we go. Uh, so the current state of PHS methods, we've had 11 uh, people who've contributed so far, 349 total commits, three releases uh, with another one, I think, coming fairly soon. 109 views in the last two weeks, which is all GitHub would let me see. Um, although I wish I could tell you how many since the release. And currently six open issues. Um, so it's fairly active. People are using it. I would think that I, that I think we should be a little bit more proactive about finding out how many people are using it and maybe do we need to push it more? Do we need to advertise it more? Um, but yeah, that's something for the future. So what's next for PHS methods? 
Um, we have six open issues. One of those, I think, is an improvement to an existing function and five suggested functions, uh, which include extracting uh, sex, age, date of birth from the chi number, um, numbering episodes in a stay, um, applying the correct version of SIMD, which is the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation, in case you haven't heard of that, for a particular year because there's several versions of it and you can only use a particular version for a particular set of years and as someone who's worked with it before it is a total pain to try and apply different versions um, if you've got like a, a data file that covers several years so I'm keen for that one to, to get into the package. Um, the last one is we had plans or we do have plans rather to build in ggplot functions to help analysts produce charts that are consistent with each other but also fit into what I've called the Public Health Scotland look and feel. So, you know, we can look at a line chart and say that's a Public Health Scotland line chart. Um, so we'll use things like the correct colours, things like that, because at the moment, you know, maybe one team does use good lines and another one doesn't. Maybe one team uses borders in their charts and another one doesn't. It would be good to just make that a little more consistent. Um, and actually, our initial idea was to have a separate kind of PHS plots was the working name package. But I think we found that creating and maintaining a package is just that little bit more work than we had first anticipated. So we're going to try and limit the number of packages that we actually create and just work it into the existing package. Um, I will say not to blame COVID for everything, but COVID has slowed that work a little bit, but hopefully in the future. So that's me. So thank you very much. That is a link to our package if you want to go and have a look at it. Um, my team in particular is big believers in coding in the open. So you can go in and have a look at all our code and let us know if you see anything horrifically wrong. Uh, that's my email address if you do want to get in touch with me. Um, if I can't answer your question, I can definitely direct it to someone on my team who can. And that's me, although hopefully I look a little less stern than that in real life. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, Cara, that was, uh, thank you so much, by the way. Can you hear me, by the way? Yes, I can. Thank you, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. There's been lots and lots of chat. And um, if I can, uh, there are some questions, but before I go to the question, uh, we put we did a poll while you were talking. Okay. Would, people, would people like to see your package on CRAN? So, um, so we've had 100% say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I will take that back to my team. There, there are people on my team who are very keen for it to be on CRAN, so I'll take that back and let them know. Okay. Uh, the other question we've had is, uh, uh, look, uh, we're all pairing with delight at what you've shared with us, so thank you so much. Uh, to you and your team, by the way, um, and we really, I mean, I really appreciate the combination of technical skill and kind of the softer skills mm. to make make the whole thing kind of um kind of succeed um people have asked about whether you're able to share your style guides uh, oh yeah with them. for sure um, okay so maybe we'll our could... public health scotland github everything's there almost yeah. everything okay. is open and accessible to look at if i'm not mistaken uh, we we have had a blog on the nhsr website from one of your colleagues and i think those yes. details will, will be there so feel free to uh, send more blogs through by the way um, oh, yeah. the other question is are S scottish nhs boards using this or only internally to phs um i believe only internally to phs at the moment it would be great if the the boards wanted to use it too i think um, probably that's an area where we could improve is being a bit more proactive in contacting the boards because there are analysts out there in the boards with great skills. We have a team within PHS and um, the local intelligence support team who work with the boards um, actually out in the boards so not from the public health offices so potentially through them that'd be a great way to spread the word. Great um, and um, just the other thing um, this is a kind of um, I'm presuming that, that many of the functions you've developed uh, are not geogra geographically specific, so yeah. so there'd be similar need in Wales and Northern Ireland and so on. Do, in your team, mm -hmm. do you have a a sense of of kind of do you get requests like that, or or generally you're focused on kind of Scottish requests, really? Um, no, no, we'd be very open to requests from from elsewhere. You know, we're all NHS, we're all facing the same kind of issues. Um, we should definitely be working together. We have had contact with. A couple of colleagues at NHS Digital, I think, in the past. Um, but if anyone else wants to to reach out, we'd be happy to work with you. Great. 
Um, Carol, I, I think if possible, if, if you and I could have an offline discussion, we would be yeah. really delighted. I'm just making sure there's no other questions on the chat at the moment, and it's approaching um, 11.20. Um, okay, so uh, look, uh, that's been that's been great. I think, uh, Anastasia, um, I think we should, look, I, 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 people don't know this, but I've got a little digital round of applause, but I've been playing it, but it hasn't worked for all our speakers. So we've decided we're going to do it slightly differently. So I think, Anastasia, do you have a, a suggestion for how we could show our appreciation to our speakers? Oh, I think Anastasia might win the green room. I think yeah. we can just, can we just put a clap symbol in, in the, in the in the chat or at least say clap or thank you um uh Carrie, that's been that's been brilliant so i think we're going to go off to our next session so maybe you can have a short comfort break before we do but the next session is about hexatime by the way can i just remind you that this is an initiative where we can try and pool resources and support and share and so on so uh, i would you know it's, if you've not heard about it before please please do come because um it, it's it's potentially very exciting in in, in how it might allow us to um to collaborate across organizational boundaries. So um, so see you soon. Thank you very much. Uh, so if we can move, I think, to the next session, or uh, uh, or Anastasia will pull you in, but I'm going to go to session, um, the Hexatime session through the top, top down, uh, top left-hand corner drop-down menu. Um, thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you. I can see uh, that the session now finished and I can see people are clapping and very proud of Scotland. Uh, so now I'm uh, finishing this broadcast and uh, hopefully uh, everyone will be able to automatically pull to the next session, which will be about Hexatime. See you there. <laughs>